Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Now today I'm taking a look at the Fujifilm X-A10. It's another look at some of these older compact cameras and here it is. And you can see how compact it really is. It's a nice compact camera. You can pick these up at pretty good value now on the second hand market. It's not made anymore. It came out in 2016. So, you know, it's eight years old now. We're in 2024, um, heading towards August. Um, and you can see here how compact it, it is. It's got the three inch articulating screen. That's pretty standard. It wasn't back then, but it is now. Um, I like the fact that it only articulates up and down. I mean, it's ideal for your selfies. Not that I really do much in the way of selfies, uh, but I prefer that when you're taking photographs, uh, certainly out in the street, because it's more discreet rather than having an articulating screen. I find them not so discreet. Also, I'm always concerned I'm going to snap the screen off. Um, I don't know why I am. It's just a psychological thing. Um, but I do love the fact that I can just hold the camera down like this and tilt it up, and it's wonderful. Works really, really well. Um, I've got fitted to it the 8mm Astahori uh, manual focus uh, fisheye lens. It's not really fisheye. We class it as a fisheye lens, but it isn't really fisheye. It's uh, ultra wide. There is distortion, obviously, because it's a wide angle lens, but I will be doing a review on this lens. Now, I keep it on the camera body simply because I use it as a lens cap. So I might as well keep it on the body and use it as a lens cap um, because it makes that nice and compact. Really nice to travel around with. And what I like about the XA10, it has the APS-C sensor in, the Fuji APS-C sensor in here. Hasn't got an anti-alias filter either, so you get sharper images. Um, so it's a really lovely, lovely sensor in this camera body. It is only 16 megapixels. Uh, I know nowadays 16 megapixels isn't a great deal. Everyone's used to 20, 24, 30. I mean, the X-H2, which is getting wide shot there, has actually got 40 megapixels in. APS-C sensor again, but that's got a 40 megapixel sensor. Um, so I think there's a lot of people will be thinking a 16 megapixel sensor doesn't cut the mustard. It won't produce the results, but it does produce the results. It really does. You can print large prints with a 16 megapixel sensor. You can certainly upload to your Instagram, your social media without any issue whatsoever. So yeah, very compact little camera body. It has got uh, various command dials and controls on it. It's got your PASM dial on the top there. Um, and you've got a command dial on the back there, but you've also got another one on the back here. So you can use one for aperture, one for shutter speed, or you can set one up for exposure compensation and the other one for adjusting your aperture or your shutter speed. Um, and I think that is really nifty. And the other thing I like about this command dial on the back, if you push it in, that uh, zooms in, does a digital zoom so you can check the focus. I mean, that is beautiful. Also on playback, when you play an image back, push that in and that will zoom in to the part of the image where the camera focused on. So it's quite well thought out. It's quite a nicely designed camera body. It's actually a very nicely designed camera body. I will flick through some of the images on the computer here so you can see them. I would strongly recommend you take a look at them on my Flickr page. You'll see them much better on Flickr than what you will do here. So take a look at them on Flickr. That would be a great thing to do. Um, it's got the Fuji X mount as well, which is really good. So um, it will take all the X mount lenses that the Fuji make. So um, even with all the current ones, all the old ones, I wouldn't put a large lens on here simply because of the size of the lens. Um, it would be a little bit overbearing. And I think that um, the weight factor would, you know, would make it not a very comfortable camera to use. Now, it hasn't got a viewfinder. There's no viewfinder. You're reliant on the screen on the back. Um, but again, we're pretty much used to that these days, using uh, you know, mobile phones. So that's not really an issue. And the great thing is, unlike a mobile phone, because you can articulate the screen, you can, move, you can do low angle shots, you can do your high angle shots because it will tilt down. You can't do that with a mobile phone. So it's a really, really good all-round compact camera. No touch screen. So to move a focus point around, it is a two-button thing to do. So you have to push this button in at the top here, and then that will move a focus point around using these, uh, using the touchpad, and that will move a focus point around to where you want it. A bit, well, not a bit, it's quite a bit slower than being able to just touch the screen or using a joystick. 
Uh, but it does do, it does do the job. Now what I tend to do, rather than mucking around with that, I leave a focus point in the center and then I focus and reframe and then take the photograph. I find that works much faster for me and you still get lovely, lovely images by just, you know, focusing in the center and then, uh, or focusing, using the focus point in the center and then reframing. I think that works fine. The focus is accurate. It's a bit slower because it's an older camera, came out in 2016. Um, but you have to put up with some of its idiosyncrasies to get great images. Uh, and as I say, the fact that it is an eight year old camera uh, doesn't mean you get images that look like they're eight years old. You can compare those with uh, images taken on modern day cameras and they're very, very comparable. That's why I say a 16 megapixel sensor isn't really an issue these days. Um, we all like to have the 20s or 24s. I'm on my Fuji X-H2, which is filming a wide shot there, has got a 40 megapixel sensor in. But when are you really going to use 40 megapixels? Certainly if you're doing a lot of cropping, the, uh, the larger the pixel count, the better it is to be able to crop the image. Uh, but, you know, if you're not doing a lot of cropping, then it's not really, uh, not really an issue. Um, it takes the standard 126 battery that you see in a lot of Fuji cameras. So if you've got any batteries knocking around, then that'll work without the SD card goes in the same slot. UHS-1, obviously, wouldn't be UHS-2, a camera of this age. Um, Built-in flash for those that might need flash. I've never used a flash on this camera. Um, I'm not even sure how you turn it on or where the switch is. It must be on the side here somewhere. Here it is. Um, so yeah, built-in flash. The nice thing with it, if you do use it, you can actually um, flip it up. So you can bounce it off the ceiling if you actually wanted to. So that's quite a useful feature. Not that I use flash. Um, and it's got a few function buttons on here. You can set up for what function you need, maybe adjusting the ISO and what have you. But I use it as a just a shoving me bag, travel, compact camera, uh, with its 8mm lens on, I quite often put the 15 to 45 kit lens on. A, because it's really, really light, it's quite compact, and also it has in lens image stabilization, where the, obviously the camera body doesn't have it. Um, yeah, there we go. That's a quick look at the Fujifilm XA10. Um, now, images, where you can see the colors are very vivid. Let's just load up one here. Colors are very vivid. Uh, they're beautifully sharp. Uh, let's just take that full frame. Um, you can see here how it just holds up really, really well. It's just look how very, very punchy colors. Um, and I'm saying it's a 16 megapixel sensor, so um, no issues with colors, sharpness, um, and the automatic white balance works really well. And I'm saying the beauty with it, you can either use it as just a compact camera. Um, the other thing is, but I don't think a lot of people are looking at. Buying an older camera, you can get it for much better value. Now, that isn't a great deal bigger. It is bigger, but it's not a great deal bigger than the likes of the Ricoh GR3. Now, the Ricoh GR3 is a thousand quid. You can get this for a great deal less than a thousand quid with, it, with a lens um, and still make a really nice compact travel camera. And it's still going to be APS-C, which is what the Ricoh GR3 is, at a much, much lower price. And also more adaptable because you can uh, you can change the lenses, which you can't do on the Ricoh. So I'm all in for getting older cameras. You have to put up with some of these idiosyncrasies and you have to put up with some of the older tech. Certainly with the autofocus um, uh, and being able to, you know, uh, set the camera up, uh, certainly with function buttons. So it is a little bit more fiddly, uh, but it's something that you really do get used to. And if you're using it as a general purpose, family uh, camera, a, a street camera, then this would be ideal. It's really, really nice. So yeah, I really do like my Fuji X-A10. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you like the content of my videos. We'd really, really appreciate that. That's how we grow the channel. Cheers for now. Bye.